All right, everybody, I'd like to welcome you all to the Pass Excel BI virtual chapter. Today we have Devin Knight, who's a Microsoft SQL Server MVP and Training Director at Pragmatic Works. He's going to be talking about an Excel uh, add-in or actually uh, implemented in 2013 uh, Power Query, and he's going to give us some great insights on this new tool for Microsoft and the uh, different data platforms that Microsoft offers to us. And before then, we're going to go through some uh, information about PASS. PASS is the Professional Association of SQL Server, and we have some community no news here. And upcoming pretty soon is uh, in a couple weeks is the PASS Business Analytics Conference. It's in Santa Clara. California. If you'd like a discount code to that, it's not listed on the screen there. I forgot to edit the PowerPoint before displaying it here. But if you email us at uh, excelbivc at sqlpass.org, we'll be sure to get that to you. A lot of great sessions, a lot of sessions on Excel and a lot of Excel experts that's going to be there. Um, <laughs> whatever your passion, there is a virtual chapter for you internationally they, there's even language uh, level uh, virtual chapters I've been involved with a, a data architect as well as the performance VC before uh, working with the Excel BI so there's many places you can get these sessions and even recorded sessions from past um, presenters um, all over the place just go to the sqlpass.org site and under chapters is a virtual chapter section you can even uh, get your email set up so you can get uh, emails about these sessions. Uh, coming up on some of the virtual chapters, uh, the first one is this one that you're watching today. There's some from the B DBA uh, Fundamentals Virtualization Professional Development as well as High Availability Disaster Recovery. There's even a Business Intelligence virtual chapter. So in the next two weeks there's plenty of free sessions you can uh, check out online. And of course, on uh, Saturdays, there's always a SQL Saturday somewhere near you in uh, almost every year. Um, so don't forget to check out the SQLSaturday.com site to make sure you can't get some free training on a Saturday near you and even some uh, pre-conference sessions they do on Fridays at some of these. Of course, um, what you're, you're hearing today is uh, I am a volunteer with the PASS organization. If you want to get involved, there's many, many benefits uh, for getting involved. If you want to be involved with this particular virtual chapter, you can email the excelbivc at sqlpass.org, and I'll get you plugged in to volunteering for this. If not, you can go to this uh, site, volunteer.sqlpass.org, and uh, as you register as a PASS member, which is free, you can go to your PASS profile and actually volunteer for some areas. There's even a way to uh, indicate um, in your region where you would like to help out with maybe local uh, pass opportunities. And of course, you know, stay connected uh, through LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as the pass site. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to our presenter. All right. Thank you, Thomas. And if you could, just let me know when my screen's visible. It is visible. All right, perfect. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining today uh, for the virtual chapter. And again, thanks, uh, Thomas, for allowing me to present uh, for everybody today. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about this topic. This is one of my favorite topics, uh, not only with Excel and Power BI, just Power BI in general is Power Query. It's one of the more impressive tools uh, within, within the Power BI stack, but it also often gets overlooked because it doesn't necessarily have the uh, presentation layer. You know, if you ever go to a a keynote presentation. They're always going to show and, and highlight the visualization side of things, but really Power Query isn't a visualization tool. It's the tool under the covers that gets the data prepared for the final visualization. So that's what we're going to talk about today is just getting started with Power Query. Again, my name is Devin Knight. You can see my contact information on here. I, I, I am on Twitter. Uh, even if you're not a big Twitter person, I, I find it pretty useful, and I'm sure Thomas would agree here, is it's a good place to get uh, information on what's happening with Power BI. What's the latest in Power BI? If you want to know if there's any updates that are coming out, which by the way, there's quite a few with Power Query. 
you can certainly uh, follow me on Twitter, and I, I tweet pretty regularly about Power BI. Uh, Thomas did give a good intro of me, a little bit about myself here. It's basically the same things uh, Thomas said a moment ago, as I am the training director at Pragmatic Works. So any, any training-related material that we come up with, uh, we're, we're a SQL Server and BI organization. Uh, we, we are very heavily, heavy, heavily, heavily invested, I should say, in the training. Uh, I am also a SQL Server MVP, and I've authored six SQL Server books uh, that you can find are out, and, and, and quite a few of them are pretty popular still. Uh, I also run the local user group here in Jacksonville, Florida. That's where I'm from, and I'm the president of that group. And we actually have one of the SQL Saturdays that's coming up uh, in May, May 9th, is going to be in Jacksonville. So uh, if you're in, in the Florida, southern Georgia area, you may want to visit us for, for our event. I also blog at a website called devonnightsql.com. Uh, I, I've blogged quite a bit about Power BI and a variety of other SQL Server and, and data topics. All right, so our focus for today is uh, really Power Query, but you know this is an intro session, so I want to give some context to those of you that have never played with or never looked at Power Query before. I want to give some context of how it fits within the whole spectrum of Microsoft's self-service BI, which they call Power BI. Um, now, really, whether you're doing a self-service BI project or if you're doing a traditional enterprise BI project, or with big servers and uh, SQL Server installed, you're really always going to go through these same three steps that I have here. You know, first step obviously is to go get the data. That's the data extraction step. Go find where the data is at, pull it in, potentially manipulate it to get it ready for uh, the next step, which is the main data modeling step. Data modeling is basically organizing that data that you just pulled out of some kind of a source and getting it prepared for the final reporting layer. Okay, so you have go get the data then prepare that data for reporting, and then finally the last step there is data presentation, which is that reporting step. So you have these three big steps that you're, you're doing in just about any kind of BI project that you might do, and uh, Microsoft does have both enterprise and self-service technologies that will help you through all three of these steps. And we're going to focus in on the self-service side of things today, uh, which is all through Excel, so perfect for the virtual chapter today. So what I want to do is talking about these three steps that I just highlighted and, and discuss which of the tools fits into those steps. Again, this is kind of some kind of level setting. If this is your first time looking at Power Query, I want you to know how Power Query fits in with all of the other Power BI tools that are available to you. All right, so the first step I mentioned there was data extraction. Now, you really have two methods or two tools, I should say, for doing data extraction. You can certainly use Power Pivot, which has been around for a while. Uh, Power Pivot was a free add-in that was introduced shortly after Excel 2010's release, so it, it works in Excel 2010 and 2013. Uh, you actually don't have to install any separate add-in for 2013. It, it comes baked into the product now at this point, uh, and it allows you to pull data in uh, using Power Pivot. You also have the ability to pull in data with Power Query, and I will explain the difference on why you would choose one versus another here in a few moments, but you could also pull data in with Power Query. Now, Power Query, uh, although it's a fairly new tool, actually does work in Excel 2010 as well as 2013. So if you're working in an environment where you only have 2010, the, the, the add-in does work in there as well uh, with only a, one small feature that's not, not available, and, and I can explain that as we get going. Now, so the question is, all right, if, if I'm doing data extraction, I'm pulling data out of some kind of a data source, which of these two tools would I use? Okay, I have an option, which one I, which would I choose and why? Well. The first reason why you might choose one over another is because of the types of data sources that they can pull in and they can consume. Power Pivot, you have quite a few different data sources that you can pull in from. Uh, I've listed a couple of them here, not all of them. You have traditional database types, you have flat files, even reporting services reports and cloud data sources can be pulled in with Power Pivot, and there's, there's more than even that. Power Query, on the other hand, has a much larger list of data sources that you can pull in from. I've listed some of the more unusual ones here. But there's even more beyond this. You can pull in from uh, not only the ones I've listed here, like SharePoint List, Active Directory, and Hadoop, and I've, there's a couple there I skipped, but there's ones even beyond that. So if you're looking to pull in from something like, for example, your Microsoft Exchange inbox, you can parse your own inbox and be able to go through it using Power Query. The point being is Power Query is where all of the investment from Microsoft is going right now when it comes to data sources. So if you're looking for kind of the future of where your, maybe your data source that you don't currently have can be consumed in, it's likely going to be Power Query. That's where all the investment is going in on the data source side. 
The other reason why you might choose Power Query over Power Pivot is the transformation layer that comes with Power Query. Power Query has a very powerful transformation tool, or really language, called M. It's just the letter M, and it stands for mashup. And that mashup language is used for not only pulling data in, but also uh, manipulating it as you pull it in. So it's like a self-service ETL tool almost, but calling it an ETL tool really discredits some of the other things that it can do. And you're, you're going to see a lot more uh, what Power Query can do as we go through some of our examples here. It's a really, really neat tool. So short summary here, why you would choose Power Pivot, the top one, is if you have a more traditional type data source or if you also have your data already formed in a uh, traditional reporting format. So for, for example, if I was pulling in data from my data warehouse, I may likely go straight to Power Pivot because I don't need to apply any extra transforms to it. It's already in good shape. But if I'm pulling in from a more unusual data source or a data source that requires a lot of massaging before I pull it in, I might use Power Query because not only does it have an extended amount of data sources that it can pull in from, it also has the capability to transform and manipulate that data, apply business rules to it, for example, using the mQuery language. Okay, now we'll, we'll get a peek at the mQuery language a little bit later, uh, but just note that the UI inside of Excel for Power Query writes most of that language for you. Uh, you can certainly go beyond that and write some on your own, but for the purposes of this session, we won't dive too deep into that. All right, then the next layer that I mentioned, the next step of the life cycle is to do data modeling. Now data modeling is primarily going to be done using Power Pivot, and Power Pivot is going to allow you to do things like this, where you can create relationships between the different data sources that you have, you can create hierarchies between the, the, at, the attributes or the fields that you have with inside of a table, you can create calculations, for example, doing things like time intelligence, where I want to compare this year's sales to last year's sales, or if I'm going to get like a 12-month rolling average, I might do something like that inside of a DAX calculation inside Power Pivot. You can also do things like KPIs, key performance indicators inside Power Pivot to be able to tell whether or not you're meeting your goal uh, in certain metrics. So the data modeling step, that's the step again that's taking the data that you've extracted and then organizing it for reporting purposes is primarily going to be done using Power Pivot. Then the final step here, as far as data presentation, can be used with several different tools. Now, from a self-service perspective, here's some of the tools you might likely use. You might use traditional Excel. You may use Power View or also Power Map. Now, traditional Excel would be doing things like pivot tables, pivot charts, as well as some, a new feature in Excel 2013, which is called Apps for Office. Uh, Apps for Office is kind of a neat feature. Basically, it allows you to go download visualizations that have been created by developers. So you may have some developers that have created a visualization and they've shared it with public and it does go through an approval process so there's no viruses embedded in it and things like that. But you can go download their visualization and embed it into an Excel report that you've designed. Pretty neat feature. Again, it's part of Excel 2013. You'll find it under the insert menu when you're inside of Excel. And you can search through all the different, uh, on the marketplace, you can search through all the different visualizations that are made available. There's some good ones out there where you can uh, perhaps make a map in your Excel report or a gauge. Uh, there's also some really bad ones or ones that are kind of uh, unusual. There's ones where you can actually put music to your data, which I have no, re no idea why you would do that, but there is one out there uh, where you can actually put music to your data. And it's not, uh, not like top 40s music, it's like a Casio keyboard playing to your, your data. It's really odd. Uh, so that's, that's traditional Excel, of course, pivot tables, pivot charts, and apps for Office. You can also do Power View. Power View is some of the visualizations we're going to show today. Uh, Power View does, of course, have the ability to do tables and charts, but they're much more impressive tables and charts that you'll see as we, we go through some of our examples today. It also has the capability of doing mapping. So it has some basic flat maps that you can apply your data to. And it even has, depending on which version of Power View you're doing, you may have some additional options for how you can export. It has some interesting export options. For example, if you're using SharePoint, uh, on-premise SharePoint, you can export to a PowerPoint slide deck. Kind of neat. And uh, it actually keeps the data live inside the PowerPoint slide deck in that way. Uh, another, another session for that, though. That's a very interesting topic. But uh, the last, last visualization here we'll talk about is Power Map. Power Map is, as the name implies, a mapping tool, and it can take geographical data and plot it out onto a 3D map. Okay, so a lot of different tools that you have just with inside the Power BI stack. Uh, not to mention there's the whole PowerBI.com, all the latest things that are happening uh, that allow you to take workbooks that you published and get them off, uh, get them online and shareable with others. 
Uh, and there's the whole Power BI preview as well, where there's a lot of new things happening. All right, but I want to stay within the scope of our session here for the rest of the day. I wanted to give you that context, all these things that you have available to you, and then let's now focus in on Power Query. Now, Power Query is, again, is another way that you can pull data into Excel, and you've had a lot of ways to get data into Excel in the past. Uh, you know, currently, uh, if you haven't played with Power Query yet, you may already know that there is, of course, a data tab inside of Excel. And that data tab inside of Excel allows you to connect to a variety of different data sources that you have and be able to just build some simple pivot tables off of those data sources. So for example, if you've done analysis services uh, in, in, your, in your shop, you could connect to your analysis server inside that data tab and start to build pivot tables on top of it. But, uh, by the way, I'll mention this. Uh, if, you've, if you've had a chance, it's pretty new, so maybe many of you haven't yet. If you have a chance to go uh, do the trial or the preview of Excel 2016, so it's uh, already talking about 2016 Excel now and Office 2016, all of the stuff for Power Query has actually been pushed into the data tab. So they're making it more integrated into the Excel tool, uh, more tightly integrated into things that are already there. So I'll just point that out, uh, that the data tab is going to now have Power Query embedded in it, at least in the preview of Excel 2013 they're showing that. So the point being here, though, is you've had ways to pull in data in the past. You can pull in from the data tab. You can pull in from the Power Pivot tab. Those are ways that have been there either in the past or fairly recently where you can get data into your workbook. Now, the problem with those two tabs, there's really nothing wrong with them as far as what their intended purpose is to do. Their, their intended purpose is to connect to your data if you're using the data tab and quickly create some pivot tables on it, or if you're using Power Pivot to pull that data in and start to, to model on top of it. But really, the, the reason why you need this new way to pull in data is because of that transformation layer that we've talked about. Power Query has that transformation language I've mentioned a couple times now called the M Query language. And that M Query language really allows you to take your analysis to the next level because you can manipulate that data as it comes in. Some really cool things you can do with that. So here's really what you're doing when you're doing Power Query. When you're doing a Power Query query, They've really kind of got a fun fun name with, there with it because it's a Power Query query. Uh, but when you're doing Power Query, you're doing these three things. First of all, you're going to go find the data. So you're going to go just discover where that data is at. Okay? So maybe it's data that you have in a database or it may be data that's inside of another workbook or data even on the Internet. You can go pull that data in through that discovery phase. So go discover where the data is at. Then optionally, you can combine that data. So what I mean by combine is it allows you inside a Power Query to actually merge queries together. And basically it's like joining queries or joining tables together if you've done joins in your past through uh, SQL in some way. If you've ever done joins, it's very similar. But it's done through the Power Query interface. Okay? So optionally that second step is you can combine your query with another query. Then finally that last step, which really may be part of that combine section, is you can refine your query. And refine basically means apply business rules to the data. So as that data is coming in, do you want to be able to, for, for instance, uh, replace all the null values with NA? Or do you want to be able to unpivot the data and unpivot it so that it can be more uh, conducive to reporting? So there's a lot of different transforms you have available to you, and you would use those through that refine step. Okay. All right, so that's really it for slides for me. I'm going to jump right into some demos for the rest of the time we have. And I will try and save some time for questions at the end. Um, but I want to get into the tool, because that's really where you're going to get your, your most bang for your buck here with any kind of presentation, of course. Now, uh, I am using Excel 2013 today. The uh, demos that I'm going to show you, all of them are of, uh, can be done with Excel 2010 as well. I will highlight one area where it is slightly different, but it's, it's pretty minimal. In fact, they've even changed it so you don't notice it as much between the two uh, tools now, uh, if you're using 2010 versus 2013. So uh, I'll go ahead and launch the tool. I'm going to launch Excel. Okay? And as I mentioned before, Power Query is an add-in for Excel. Okay? So Power Pivot uh, was an add-in for Excel 2010 and it's gotten baked into Excel 2013, so you don't have to download anything extra for Power Pivot. Now with Power Query, Power Query, this newer tool, is an add-in for both Excel 2010 and 2013. So if you do a quick Bing or Google search for uh, Power Query and download, you'll find it very quickly. Uh, in fact, the nice thing about how the Power Query add-in works is they very frequently update it. Uh, and it's a good thing that they update it this frequently. 
there's a lot of new additions and data sources and, and transforms that they add to the tool to make it more usable for you. And, and, and every, I would say on average, every month and a half to two months, you'll have some new update that comes through with Power Query. And it gives you some new capabilities uh, inside the tool. In fact, there was, there was one in March just recently, there was a new update that came through in March. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that. And the nice thing is that it is pretty clear whenever there is an update for Power Query, you'll notice it. I'll show you where you'll be able to, to identify that you need to go download, download an update. All right, so I'm going to do a blank workbook here to go ahead and get started. And you'll notice up in my top ribbon that I do have a Power Query add-in already installed. Uh, now, if you download and install the Power Query add-in, uh, you may not initially see that tab show up here, so you may need to go add it. And the way that you would add it after you download and install it, if for some reason it's not showing, is you would go under the Files menu in the top right. So I would go under File, and from the File menu, I would go down to Options. Okay. And then inside the Excel Options menu here, you can go to the Add-ins section to make sure that it gets turned on. So underneath Add-ins, you can manage the Add-ins down here on the bottom. You'll see it's set to Excel Add-ins right now. You would actually change that to Com Add-ins. So I change this to Com Add-ins and hit Go. And then when I change this to Com Add-ins, you'll see that it pops up a list of all the Add-ins that I have installed. And you can check or uncheck the ones that you want to be part of your Excel window your Excel ta uh, ribbon, I should say. Now you'll see Power Query is already selected, so I'm good to go there. Just wanted to point that out if you're downloading and installing it for the first time. If you don't see it initially, you may have to go add it. All right, so mine's already here, so I'll hit Cancel on this, and I'll go show you the uh, add-in up at the top here. So you'll find the Power Query tab appears up at the top, okay? And inside the Power Query ribbon, you'll find all sorts of different ways you can connect to data. Now I mentioned that they do update the add-in very frequently, uh, roughly every month and a half to two months. So if you're unsure of whether you're running the latest version of the add-in, you'll actually notice in the ribbon that they give you a little uh, button here that if that button is lit up, meaning it's not grayed out like mine is, that's telling you that you need to go download the latest add-in. And if you click on the button, it'll guide you through where to go download it from. Uh, you don't have to worry about uninstalling and reinstalling. You can just install the latest right on top of the other one, and it, it replaces all the, the bits for it. Okay, so I'm up to date here. I don't have to worry about that, but if you're opening up Power Query and perhaps you downloaded it four or five months ago, you might want to check there to make sure that you have the latest build. All right, now in my Power Query window, you'll see I have several different types of ways I can pull in data, and that's the first section that you're looking at in the top right section here. In this Get External Data section that you have in the top left, these are all different ways that I can pull in data, and you have quite a list uh, of data sources that you can pull data in from. Uh, you can certainly pull in from more traditional data sources like files. So you can pull in from Excel files, CSV files, text files. Uh, I will note one nice uh, option down here. You'll see there's an option here called From Folder. The uh, idea behind the From Folder option is you can point Power Query to a folder that's full of files. And as long as all of those files are formatted the same way, it can pull and suck in all those files at the same time and pull in all the data from those files at one time rather than having to do each one individually. So that's a neat option there as well that's made available to you. You do have the traditional database types. I know I'm skipping over. I'll come back to those. You do have the traditional database types here, relational databases that are visible here. You know, you have SQL Server, Oracle, uh, DB2. Of course, uh, what you do need to have on your machine to connect to those data sources is the drivers. So if I want to connect to Oracle, you need to make sure you have the Oracle drivers installed, for example. But all traditional database types you'll find in the databases list. Uh, from Azure, you'll find connect, ways to connect to Azure databases. You can also connect to Azure Blob Storage, as well as Microsoft's big data uh, tool, which is called HD Insights. You can connect to that as well. One other nice feature that's inside of Power Query is you can also connect to the Azure Marketplace. A lot of people aren't really familiar with the Azure Marketplace. It's basically a marketplace. Go figure. It's a marketplace that has all kinds of different data sources that are available to you. And some of them are free and some of them are for purchase, but they allow you to go get other public data sources that are available to enhance what you're doing inside of your self-service solution. So say, for example, you have connected uh, into your data warehouse, if you have a data warehouse or your reporting database, let's just call it a reporting database. If you've connected into your reporting database, you can then enhance what you're doing in that reporting database by connecting to one of these other types of data sources like the Azure Marketplace. And you could pull in, for example, let's say that 
you wanted to do like an IP address lookup because you're, you're uh, reporting on web, web, uh, website traffic and I want to see which company is associated with this IP address range. Well, you can actually go find some of that information in the Azure Marketplace, tie it in with the data that you do have, that's your web traffic, and then be able to uh, report on which companies are going to your websites. So there's some neat ways that you can be able to dig into that data. You'll also find another list here. The last list is from other sources. These are kind of some random other sources that are in here, but there's some really good ones in here. Uh, you can, of course, pull in from the share, a SharePoint list. So if you have a SharePoint list that you want to connect to and use as a data source, you can do that. You can pull in, I'll, hi, I'll just highlight a couple here. You can pull in from Active Directory. So if I have, uh, it basically runs little LDAP queries under the covers, but I can go uh, query and see, for example, what groups I'm a part of and that sort of thing. You can also pull in from your inbox. So this might seem like a kind of unusual one at first, but uh, the Exchange inbox one or the Microsoft Exchange is actually one that we use at Pragmatic Works. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what we do, we, we do several things, but one of the things that we offer is uh, a software a package. And uh, if you offer some kind of software package, you obviously need to have a support team to help support that stack of tools. So we have uh, a connector inside Power Query that we actually use to connect to our support inbox and see which of our customers are causing the most support cases, which ones we need to put our more senior support engineer on, that sort of thing. So we actually find the Microsoft Exchange connector here very useful. You can also connect to Microsoft Dynamics or Salesforce. Those are both different CRM systems. Okay. And you do have social media connectors as well, like Facebook. So you can connect to Facebook. Again, some people laugh at why, why do they add this Facebook connector? Well, a lot of companies are actually finding this useful when they have very large social media campaigns that they want to address and see what the company sentiment is. So who, who's, uh, who's liking our posts and things like that. Uh, now, if there's a data source that you want that you don't see listed here, you can, of course, connect to other data sources using ODBC connections. So you're not limited to the list that you see here. If you can create an ODBC connection to the connector that you, you desire, you can still connect to it using from ODBC. And then the last option here is blank query, where basically you just get a blank text box and you write an M query to try and return back the results that you want. Okay. All right, so that's the options that we have uh, listed here. Now, there's a couple that I skipped. These first two are actually going to be the first two that I start showing. So I, I kind of skipped those intentionally because we're going to come back to them now. There's a lot of other buttons and knobs and things like that that we can talk about, but we'll, but we'll discuss many of these as we go through uh, some of these hands, I shouldn't say hands-on, but some of these examples I'm going to walk you through. All right, so the first one that I want to show you guys is this online search option that's up, that appears in the far left. Basically what online search does is it allows you to search through a curated list of data sources that are available to you. Now they can be either public or private data sources that you may have. Okay, so what I mean by that is public data sources are just a list of data sources that Microsoft has kind of curated. Uh, ones that uh, are included there are things like data.gov, healthcare.gov, uh, you'll find the World Bank data there, but you'll also find data sources like Wikipedia are in there for more unusual searches as well. And you can actually pull in data from Wikipedia using the online search. That's more the public route. You also have the ability to search through private data sources that are private to your organization. Okay, so what I mean by that is if I select online search here, which I'm going to go ahead and do, you'll see on the right-hand side that it pops up in this little search engine here for me, basically, and it allows me to search for a data set. Now, if I'm using Office 365, okay, so you'll notice down here in the bottom, it says now you can use Power Query with Power BI for Office 365. If I'm using Office 365 with Power BI, I could sign in here, and I could see any data sources, or data, I should say queries, that someone has privately published from my organization. It's not broadcasted out publicly to other companies. It's just within my organization. I can search out queries that others have created. So a good use case for this would be, you know, I've created a query and I want to be able to share it with others. Perhaps maybe here, here's my example. Uh, I've created a data source or a query, I should say, that has competitors' data in it. Okay. And while that competitor data is really useful to me, it'll also be really useful to about four or five other departments in my company. So rather than kind of hogging it to myself, I can publish that off as a shared query here, and then others that are part of my organization can search either public or private data sets, queries I should say, and they can uh, use my query as a data source for them. 
Now all they'd have to do is they'd sign in using their Office 365 account and they'd be able to search both public and private. Now, if you don't have Office 365, you can still use this. You would only be able to then search, though, through public data sets. So, for example, if I wanted to search through here and see uh, something like the busiest airports. Let's say busiest airports 2014. All right, so I've searched for the busiest airports in 2014. You'll notice what happens is it only returns back public data set, data, sorry, public queries, and it's returned back 299 of them. Now, if I had logged in, you would also see an option here to toggle back and forth between public data source, door data sources, and organization queries. So you can toggle back and forth between which ones you would like to choose from. Uh, in my case here, I'm not going to sign in because I, I know not everyone has Office 365, so I want to show stuff that everybody can do. So I've signed in here, or I ha I've chosen not to sign in, and I'm just searching through public queries. So I've started, I'm going to select here the 2014 stats for the world's busiest airports. And you'll see here, I don't even have to click on it, but it gives me a little preview of what the data is inside of that query. And I can see it's giving me a list of all the busiest airports here by passengers. So the total number of passengers here is what's determining uh, who's the busiest, which is actually what I wanted anyways. You'll also notice here that it's highlighting the things that I typed in, and it kind of gives you an idea of why did it return back these uh, queries because it's highlighting the options that you've actually typed in. So the, the, this, just like a search engine works, is it kind of does a little search engine optimization against the query that I have, against the data sources that are available, and it returns back what is uh, what I'm looking for here. Now, if I'm really interested in looking at this data a little bit deeper, and maybe I want to manipulate it a little bit more, I could either right-click on it and hit Edit or Load. You'll see here there's two options. There's Edit, Load, and Load to. Okay, we'll describe what those mean. Or you can also just hover above it as well, like I did a few moments ago, and you'll see edit and load also. Sorry, guys. You'll see edit and load also down here as well. So you have a couple ways that you can do that. Now, what load means, load is going to take the data just as it appears up here and bring it into an Excel spreadsheet, just as it appears here. Okay? The load to option, which you'll also find if you hit the little down arrow here, Okay. The load to option, what that allows you to do is decide, do you want to take this data that's appearing in the preview and bring it into an Excel workbook, or do you want to, I should, I said, should say worksheet, or do you want to bring it into a Power Pivot model? So you have the ability to choose. Do I want to just bring it into a spreadsheet or into a Power Pivot model? Now, the reason why you might choose one versus another is a couple reasons why. First of all, I might want to bring it into a Power Pivot model because I have more than a million rows that I'm working with. So I'm sure you guys are aware of the row limitations that uh, are, are um, limited inside of Excel, and you have roughly a million rows to work with inside of Excel. So if, if I know that the data set I'm working with has more than a million rows, then I would probably tell it I want to load it into my Power Pivot data model here. Otherwise, I can just tell it to put it into an Excel worksheet and just work with it in a spreadsheet if I wanted to. Now, the other option here you have is Edit, and basically what Edit is going to allow you to do is it's going to launch. I'm going to go ahead and select Edit. It's going to launch the Power Query Editor, okay, and it's coming up right now. And the Power Query Editor is where you do most of your, not most, it's where you do all of the transformations that you're going to do against this query, okay? So we've actually pulled in some data now from Wikipedia, okay? By the way, you can tell it's Wikipedia by looking at the From option right here, okay? So I know where it came from. But I can take this data that came from Wikipedia, the world's most trusted data source, well, uh, kind of joking there, but I can use that now and I can actually start to manipulate the data inside this Power Query Editor. I have the ability to do all sorts of transformations. You'll see if I have a whole new query interface here inside the Power Query Editor where I can start to add in uh, new transformations, I can create new columns, I have all sorts of things that are available to me now. Okay? So just to give you a quick example of how we can go from having no data to visualizing something very quickly, here's what we can do. I can say that I, I want to go ahead and visualize some kind of report based on what we have here so far. I want to, for example, take the location and the total number of passengers, and I really only need those two columns. I don't care about the other ones because really what I want to do is take this data, put it onto a map, and be able to visualize it for my users. So if I want to do that, I can select the two columns that I want. And probably the easiest way to remove the other columns is to right-click on one of those two highlighted columns and I can select that I want to remove the other columns. Okay, so I'll select Remove Others, 
And just like that, we've got the data basically down to the fields that we actually care about. Now, if I'm happy with this and I don't need to do any other changes, I can go ahead and hit close and load, which I'm going to do this time because I have some other examples where I'm going to go deeper into the transformations you can do. So I'll hit close and load. It's going to take that data, bring it into an Excel worksheet, as you see right here. And then if I want to visualize this from here on, really Power Query was very quick there. We're already done with the power, our first Power Query example. And that's really the beauty of it, is I went from having no data to going out, finding some data in a public setting in this case, and then now I'm already ready to visualize it. I don't have to do anything else. I can take this data if I want to, for example, put it into a Power View report. I can come up to the Insert menu and tell it I want to insert this into Power View. Now, I'm going to use Power View several times in this demonstration. This isn't really a Power View session, but it's a, obviously a great tool for being able to visualize the results from what we have inside Power Query. So don't worry too much if I don't go into the details of how I built the Power View reports. I'm more focused in on, in this case, on the Power Query uh, demonstrations. So I've got this data. I've brought it into Power View. I can make this into a map if I wanted to, and I could even uh, perhaps rearrange the fields here a little bit so I can actually see where the world's busiest airports are. And in this case, I've built out a report where the size of the bubble represents the number of passengers, and you'll be able to see here that uh, Atlanta is actually my top uh, as far as busiest airports here. Okay, so pretty neat. Just a quick example, and that, that shows you how quickly you can go from nothing to visualizing some data from Power View very quickly. All right, let's do another example. All right, so we get our first example here, very basic. Let's do another one. Uh, what I'd like to do in this next example, and again, this is going to come from the Power Query tab, is I want to demonstrate what you can do from the web. Now, this is a really neat option. The from web option allows you to go import data from the internet. Now, the, the data that you find on the internet can either be stored in a file on the, on the web, or it can actually be data that's just on some web page. So you can actually do some like screen scraping and pull data out of a web page, if it's in like a HTML table, and pull it in as a data source after, after that. So that's what I'm going to do for some of these last examples here we're going to go through, is show you how you can use the from web option to pull in some more unusual data that you may have thought was not possible in the past. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I actually have open already a couple websites, and I'll pull this over here so you guys can see it as well, just to share, share with you what websites I'm going to. Uh, the first one that I'm going to go to here is called explore.data.gov. Okay, so if you're curious which data sources I'm going to use, first one's explore.data.gov. It's basically data.gov, and it kind of redirects you to catalog.data.gov. And on this website, you'll find you can actually search through all sorts of public data sources that the government places out on the web. Now, for our first example here from a web option, I'd like to show you guys how you can pull in data from just a file that you find on the Internet. All right, so here I'm going to search out, and I'm going to find the FDIC failed banks. All right, so let me give you the scenario here for this example. In this example, let's say you work for a bank, okay? And your bank is looking to expand another brick and mortar banking center in a new area. Uh, but you're really concerned over the last 10 years, obviously, there's been a lot of failed banks, a lot of banks that have actually uh, had, to, had to collapse or for whatever reason they closed certain banking centers. And you're concerned about that and you, you think that there might be a trend in certain parts of the country where that happens more, more often than not. So you want to try and avoid those areas. So you've gone to data.gov like I have here. And you found that there is a list of FDIC failed banks that you can search through, okay? All right, so you would decide, hey, I want to take that file that they have. They have a basic CSV file here, and I'd like to take that CSV file and make that a data source for Power Query. So I can actually do some analysis on that. So here's what we can do. We can uh, actually go to the file, okay? And you'll find here is a URL to the file itself, okay? So it's my FDIC.gov, whatever... Uh, banklist.csv. I'm going to copy that out. Okay. I'm not even going to download it. Here's the key thing. I'm not going to download it. I'm going to leave it out there. And the reason why I'm going to leave it out there is because as they make updates to that list, I want to make sure I get those updates without having to re-download the file. So I'm just going to copy the link to the file, go back to Excel, okay. make sure I'm looking at my Power Query tab, and select From Web this time. So I'm going to select the From Web option up here in the top ribbon. I'll paste in that URL that we just copied. Okay, so you'll see that URL I just showed you that I copied from the data.gov website, and I'll hit OK. 
And what it's going to do, again, I'm not downloading the file, so that's a really cool feature is you can actually leave the file out there live. I'm going to leave that file out there, and I'm going to go pull in the data from the file and leave it on the web. Okay? Again, the benefit of doing that is anytime they make a change to the file, all I have to do is refresh my query, and it'll go get the latest. That's the beauty of it there. All right, so this gives me a list of all of the failed banks here that I can see. And what I'd like to do is I want to first start by limiting the columns that I'm working with. There's a lot of columns in here I don't care about. Uh, so let's limit this to, say, just the bank name, the city, the states, and the closing dates. I'll remove the other columns. I showed you how to do this earlier. You can right-click on one of the column headers and tell it to remove the other columns. All right, the other thing I'd like to do is, you know, it's great to have in here the date that the bank closed, but I'm really more concerned with the year. I'm, I'm, I'm building more of a dashboard type report, and I want to roll the bank dates uh, where, they, where they actually closed up to the year level. So the cool thing about how this works is you can easily tr make transformations on columns based on the data type. So if Power Query realizes that this is a dates data type, which, by the way, here's how you can tell that. You can select the column and then go up to the top ribbon, and you'll see the data type right here. Okay, so you can see it, it realizes that this is a date data type. So if it realizes that it's a date data type, you get special types of transforms that you can use against that data. By right-clicking on the column, you'll see there's a transform list here. Okay, so you'll notice transform, and it gives me a list of types of transforms that I can use against a date data type. You'll see here that I can do things like return back the day, the month, the year, the day of the week. So maybe there's some impact of day of the week when things close. I don't, I don't think there actually would be, but it's interesting if I wanted to do that kind of analysis. And I can also, let's say in my example, I want to roll it up to the year level. So I'll roll, roll it up to the year level. You'll see that that transform applies to the data, and you can see we're only returning back the year now. In fact, I'll go ahead and return, rename that to just year. Okay? The other things that I have in here I'm not too concerned with, I'll leave those alone. And if I'm happy with those, I'll go ahead and pull this in. Now, one thing before I go ahead and hit close and load again that I want to make sure I point out to you is a, is a best practice to do here with Power Query is you really want to name the queries. Now, I didn't do this in the last example, but I want to point it out to you here because it's really important because in this case, it's called a query one. Uh, obviously, here, that's not very descriptive on what it is. And as you start to do multiple things in Power Query in the same workbook, it'll be a little confusing when you have one called Query 1 and another one called Query 2, Query 3, Query 4. So you really want to go name your queries on the right-hand side here. So in this case, I'll call this one FDIC Failed Banks. Okay? You'll also notice right below this that you have a list of steps. And steps are really just transforms that have been applied to your data. Uh, so, for example, you can, if I click through these different steps over here on the right-hand side, it'll allow me to go look at each of the different transforms that have been applied to the data, and it'll show me how I've changed things across time. You can see here that I removed some columns. When I removed the columns, it did this. When I changed it to a year, it did this. When I renamed the column, it did this up top here. So you're actually able to step through each of the transforms that you've done. And the nice thing about that is if you realize you made a, st a mistake on a previous transform, is you can modify it, and then it applies all of those changes downstream, assuming that the uh, other transforms will still function correctly with that change. So I've got this uh, data in here now. I'll go ahead and close and load, pull this in. It's, again, pulling it into a Excel spreadsheet. I'll uh, visualize this in Power View again. So I'll go insert this into Power View. Okay. All right, I've got this data now into Power View, and what I'll do is I'll start by putting it into a map, and then we'll show how we can do this in other ways that are interesting as well. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to take and remove the size of the bubble. Let's move the state. Again, don't worry so much about how I'm creating the report. That's not so much the important part for this demonstration. But what I do want to show you is how you can quickly go from Again, no data to a visualization of your data very quickly. Okay, so check this out. We've got a map visualization of this. If I wanted to, I see Georgia has a lot of failed banks. It actually has 91. If I double-click on Georgia, I can drill in and see each of the cities within the state where I had those failed banks. Pretty interesting stuff there. You can go deeper, and then I can hover above those bubbles and see Atlanta had 10 of those 91. You can always drill back up. So that's all power view there. There's a lot of neat stuff you can do. I could change this into a uh, bar chart if I wanted to, for example, instead. You can visualize it in different ways. So some really neat ways you can do that. Okay. Let me do that just so you can see very clearly Georgia and Florida where, where the failed banks were occurring. 
Okay, good deal. So the last example I want to show you here, this is kind of finishing that one where I'm showing you here, I can see Georgia is where most of the failed banks were occurring. Atlanta was one of the cities where most of those failed banks were occurring. Uh, the last example I want to show you is how you can go get data from multiple data sources and bring them all together. All right, so the way I'm going to show you this one is, again, I'm going to go get data from the web. I have another website here called gapminder.org. Okay, it's another public data source out there uh, that you can use. And what I'm going to use this one for is to go get some public data about kind of world health. Okay, so I'm going to go get world health data. It has in here things like the body mass index of company, uh, not companies, but countries. It has the average population. It has the average income, things like that that are interesting. So what I want to do is I want to use this really neat website. It's a website that's run by a university professor that he actually does a lot of TED Talks. Uh, his name's Hans Rosling, and uh, he does quite a few TED Talks, and he uses this data that he actually has made public to be able to analyze world, world events, basically. So what I want to do is I want to analyze three different data sources here and show how you can merge them together uh, using Power Query. Uh, the first one that I want to do is I'm going to get BMI, our body mass index, and I want to analyze and see which of the countries has the highest average BMI versus the lowest average BMI. I also want to bring in average income and see which of the countries has the highest average income versus the lowest average income. And finally, the, the average population, or should, I should say the total population, and see which countries have the uh, highest total population versus the lowest total population. And what I can do with this is I can really do some analysis and say, uh, I'm thinking that the countries that have the higher population are also going to have the higher BMI and perhaps also have the highest uh, or the highest average income. Now, I'm just kind of making a hypothesis here. I might be dead wrong, but I want to use Power Query to try and prove or disprove my little hypothesis there. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to this gapminder.gov, uh, sorry, gapminder.org website, go to the data tab where he has all the data for his uh, public demonstrations. And I'm going to search out a couple of the data sor sources here. The first one I'm going to pull in is BMI for body mass index. And you'll see there's a couple listings here. I'm just going to pull in BMI for men just to generalize for our demonstration here. And again, rather than actually downloading the file, I'm going to right click on the download link and just copy the shortcut or copy the link address. I don't want to actually pull the file in because I want to be able to hit a refresh button and get the latest of that data. So I'm going to right click on the download link and click copy shortcut. I'll then take that shortcut into Power Query, okay, back into Excel, and I'll use my from web option again, and I'll paste in the URL. Okay, so I'm pasting in the URL for that uh, link that we just had, and I'll hit OK. All right, so it's pulling in that data from his website, which is actually stored on Google, Drive, or Google Spreadsheets, which is interesting. So it shows you here that you can actually pull in from spreadsheets that are stored in Google. And I'm actually seeing on the right-hand side in the Navigator pane all of the different spreadsheets that are inside that Excel workbook. Now, the one that I want to choose for our example is this one here called Data. And I'll hit Edit to pull in the data from the data spreadsheet. It's going to pull in that data into the Power Query Editor, as you've seen a couple times now. And then I can start to use the Power Query Editor to manipulate and shape the data for a visualization that I want to do. Okay. Now, the problem with the data that's listed here is, first of all, you'll notice a couple problems with it. The first problem that you'll probably notice is that the column header is actually in the first row of the data. Luckily, that's a very easy fix. If you go up to the top ribbon here, you'll see there's an option here that says use the first row as headers. So I can select that. It'll push the first row up into the header section. Problem number one solved. Okay. The other problem with the data that you'll, you'll hopefully notice is if you've worked in BI, this data is really not situated for a BI reporting environment. Uh, the, the, the data that we're seeing here is really, basically looks like a final report of data, maybe something you might get from a vendor, and not necessarily something that will be useful for building a report on top of. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So I'm going to whiteboard just for a moment here. All right, so we have data that looks like this. It has each of the years, okay, as columns. All right, so on and so forth. And we have values underneath each of those for the BMI. Okay, I'm just giving some random values. Don't worry so much about the data. More of the column names are what's important. Okay, so we have each country has a listing 
for their BMI. Now the problem with the data being stored like this is that it's really not very conducive to BI purposes because if I wanted to know what the total or let's say the overall average BMI of all the countries for all year were, were I would have to drag in each individual one of these columns because these are individual columns here. I don't have one column that has the, the BMI for each year. I have to go to each individual column. When in reality, what I'd like to see the data be shaped as is look something more like this, where I have in it a column called country, a column called year, and a column called BMI. So I might have countries like uh, US and the year and what the BMI was. Okay, and I might have Canada. Actually, I probably I would have multiple U.S. columns, right? Our rows. I would have a row here for 2012, then, and whatever the average BMI was for that year. So it's transforming, and really, what it's called is an unpivot. So this is called an unpivot. What we're about to do. We want to unpivot the data so we can shape it more appropriately for BI purposes. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple to do. I'm going to show you two different methods for doing so. I'm going to show you the hard way first, and I'll show you the easy way next. Uh, the, the hard way here is I can select each of the columns individually, or I can kind of multi-select all the columns, that I want to unpivot. So the country column is fine. I don't want to do anything to the country column, but it's the year columns that I want to unpivot here. So I'm going to multi-select all of the year columns that I have, like so. Okay, so I just held down shift and multi-selected all of the year columns. I left the country column by itself. And then if I want to unpivot those columns, I could right click on any one of the highlighted ones and I can select unpivot right here. Okay? By selecting unpivot, check out what it does. It actually does what I showed you on my screen when I whiteboarded a few moments ago, is it transposes those columns and make them they make makes them rows. And I now have a total of three columns, one here called country, one here called ye, uh, what I'm going to rename as year, and then another one here that I'm going to rename as BMI. Okay? Now that's pretty slick that it has the ability to do that because normally some doing something like that in like a SQL environment, while it may not necessarily be difficult, it's a pretty time-consuming thing to do. So it's impressive that you're able to do that that quickly uh, here inside the Power Query Editor. Just with a couple of clicks, you can actually modify and, and unpivot that data. All right, a couple other cleanup things I'd like to do here is I'm going to change the data type of year. I'm going to right-click on year and change the data type here just by doing a change type to a whole number. There's a reason why I'm doing that, you'll see later. And then I'll also rename this query here to just be called BMI. All right, so I'm going to close and load that, and I'm going to go get some more data. Now, I'm running out of time here, so bear with me. These, these last couple ones I'm going to do a little bit faster because really they're going to work the same way, but uh, just for interest of time here, I'm going to have to go a little bit faster here. All right, so this next one here that I'm going to pull in is going to be income per person. So we got one data source in already. I'm going to go pull in another one from the website. I'm going to pull in income per, burst per person. And again, I'm going to uh, right click on the file that I'd like to pull in data from and copy the link address. I'll go bring that back into Power Query. Okay. I'll paste in the URL for it, just like we did the first time. It's going to pull in the data from that web address. Okay. And then it's going to bring me into the Power Query Editor after I select the Data tab in the Navigator pane here. Now this one's going to have a lot of the same types of transforms that need to be applied to it. Uh, I will need to move the first row of data up into the header section here again. Okay, so you'll notice here the first row has my headers again, so I'll need to go ahead and select Use First Row as Headers again. You'll also notice here on the bottom it's giving me a little information uh, box here where it's saying that the data in the preview has been truncated. Basically, that's just telling you that the data that you see in this query editor is a subset of the data. Uh, because there's so much data in this spreadsheet that it can't fit it all into the window that we're looking at, it's giving me a subset of it. Uh, and whenever I hit close and load, it's going to apply the transforms that I create here to the entire data set. All right. So uh, last time I showed you how you can unpivot by selecting all of the year columns and then right-clicking and selecting unpivot. That's one way you can do it. The other way that you can do this as well is select the columns that you don't want to unpivot, like this one, for example, just the, the country column. And I can also do an unpivot by selecting the one I want to leave alone. And then if I go up to the Transform tab at the top, you'll see that Unpivot actually has a little drop-down box here. And I can tell it that I want to actually unpivot the other columns. So unpivot everything else I can select. 
and it has the same effect, but it saves me a little time from having to select each individual column like I did last time. So kind of neat option there. Uh, again, I'll rename the columns here, and we'll get this uh, last one in here. This one was uh, average income, and I'll go ahead and name this query as well. I'll call it income on the right-hand side. Okay, and I have another query that's pretty much ready to go here. Remember the last time I also changed the data type, I'm going to do that as well here. Now the reason why I changed the data type on this is because I want to be able to do some nice filtering on it. Uh, you do have filtering inside Power Query, really similar to how you have inside of Excel. If I want to filter this year column, for example, I could hit the down arrow here and tell it I want to do something like a number filter and, and say just bring back the years between a certain range, I could say, for example. So I could do a between and say filter everything between 1980 and 2008. Okay? And then I'm pretty happy with this last data set. I think we've got a good uh, data set ready to go. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close and load this data set that we have, and I'm going to go get one more. I'm going to do this one just as fast. I know it's a little fast here probably for you, but that's okay because we're, we're right towards the tail end where I want to show you the new thing I haven't, haven't been able to do, which is the merge capabilities here. So this last one I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the total population data set that I have. So there's one here that has the total population by country, and I'm going to copy the shortcut for that as well. I'll take it into Power Query, and I'll pull data from the web. This is the third time we've done something similar to each other. That's why I'm going a little bit faster here. But once I get these three different data sets in here, these three different queries in here, what I'd like to be able to do is to then merge them together and be able to join those data sets together and join those queries together. And there is some merge capabilities in here that I'm going to show you. Okay, so you'll see I'm doing this one a little bit faster, but don't worry, I've also already shown you the same things on this one a couple times at this point. So yes, I do want the first row to have my column headers in it. It's one of the first things we'll do. And then I also need to unpivot the data again, so I'll uh, select that I want to do an unpivot here just like we did in the previous two examples. And I'll rename my columns. Okay, and this one is population. All right, and then I'll change my data type, and then I'll do my filter between certain range of values again. All right, now, with these three separate data sets that are now done, I'm wrapping up this last one here, with these three different data sets that are now done, I can take all three and merge them together so I can analyze them at the same time. That's going to be uh, available by going up to your home ribbon here, and you'll find there's an option here called Merge Queries. There's a whole combined section. You can either merge queries, which is like a join. So you can do like a join here. And you also have an append option, which is like a union, if you're uh, from the SQL world here. Okay? I actually want to join some queries together. So I'm going to select Merge Queries. And then it's going to give me the ability to merge the query that I have for population with one of the other ones that we've already created, like BMI. You can tell it which columns you want to join on. So I'm telling it I want to join on country and year to country and year from my other data set. And then tell it I just want to include the matching rows here on the bottom, which is basically like doing an inner join here. Okay? If I had not checked off this bottom option, it's like doing a left outer join where it'll pull back all of the rows from the first data set and only the matching rows from the second one. Okay. There are some different options for joins as well, but you need to know a little bit of an inquiry to be able to do that. And I'd love to come back and actually do some inquiries uh, with you as well. Maybe I can uh, work with Tom on coming back. All right, so I've got this one where I've merged these two together. You'll see that I've now merged them here. It's appearing here as another table. Uh, if I hit the little expand button here, I can tell it that I want to bring back the BMI from the other data sets. And you'll see BMI now brought back and merged together. And then I'll do one more merge where I'm going to merge in the third data set, and then we'll be done. All right, so I'm now merging in income. Again, I'm going to join on country and year and country and year, and I'll hit OK. And I've now brought in three separate queries together with each other. All I really want is income from that new data set, and I can see all of those now listed in here. So I have all three of those now merged together as one query. I can load that into Excel and start to create a visualization where I really can analyze all three at the same time, which is kind of the whole point, right, is I want to be able to see all this data at once. So I can tell it now I want to put this into something like a Power View report and visualize it in a nice interface like a scatter chart, for example. 
Now, what I'll need to do to be able to do that is change the type of that. There we go. So the idea here is I'm able to take all three of those, merge them together using Power Query, visualize them together using something like Power View. And by the way, anytime you use Power View, it's also using Power Pivot in the back end. Whether you realize it or not, Power Pivot is actually being used every time I click Insert into Power View. So all three of the major Power BI tools are being used here. So here's my analysis. I said population. Let me see the top three populated countries. Looks like China, India, and United States. Probably no, no shock there. My highest average BMI, I can change it to average if I want here. Let's make that average BMI instead of sum. Should be about the same. My average BMI looks like our island nations up top here. So I got Nauru and uh, Cook Islands and some other one up there. But the other th cool thing I can do here with Power View now is I can actually animate this and see across time how this has changed and how, how different countries have grown across time, how they've changed, how some of these island nations have uh, changed as well. And I could reorganize this chart if I wanted to to be able to visualize it in different ways. So that's kind of visualizing using Power View, but there's really some neat ways you're able to do some of these things. And, you know, for example, if I wanted to shift th some things around, I can look at the, the highest average income countries in the top now. There's a lot of cool things you can do here. So Power BI really does fit all in together with each other. You're not necessarily going to use one and, and just kind of go from there. You're oftentimes going to be integrating multiple tools together. Uh, now, I know we're out of time. If you really like this, these uh, things that we've shown today, I do have a white paper on this that you can kind of follow up with and, and look at how you can go deeper into some of the things. Uh, I can also, I'd be happy to come back and do another webinar if you'd like, where we go even deeper. Um, uh, sorry, Tom, so I'm going to do a small plug here. We also have, um, uh, uh, PragmaticCourse.com does free training as well, and we actually have this month, we're doing a Power BI month. So if you visit our website, uh, it's PragmaticCourse.com, and underneath for, uh, training, you'll find a free training section where you can see all kinds of uh, free sessions uh, as well. And we have people, not just Pragmatic Works people, but people in the community as well. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll put my contact info back up here. And if you'd like to reach out, you're more than welcome to. I'll hand it back over to you, Tom. So. Yes, thank, thanks a lot, Devin. And uh, actually, I was going to plug that for our, uh, Pragmatic Works because I just registered for about four of those yesterday. So I was going to mention that y'all do uh, free um, sessions as well. And there's a whole bunch about Power BI coming up in the next month. We, we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first sure. question, Devin, is... Where does data modeling fit with Power BI Preview? Since the Power BI Design Preview using Power Query, wouldn't you want to create the calculations in Power Query? Uh, Power Pivot create the calculations? She's saying it. I think she's, she's wondering if Power Query is embedded in the Power BI Designer Preview Edition. Oh, okay, sure. So, uh, good, great question. Let me pull that up here. I actually have that installed as well. I'll just kind of highlight a few things in there. I'm not going to go in a full demo. Um, yeah, the, the new Power BI Designer actually has three tools in one. Uh, it does have Power Query. Uh, it also has Power View, which is a, a completely redesigned Power View if you take a look at it. And it also does have Power Pivot, but the Power Pivot components are, are pretty small right now. They're working on expanding it. Uh, so, to, to answer your question here, from a modeling perspective, there is modeling in, in, inside of the Power BI Designer. It is also still, that modeling is still done with Power Pivot. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the Power Pivot functionality in the Power BI Designer is limited to this guy right here. But I can tell you already that that's going to be expanded within the next couple months. That'll be, you'll have like a full, I would assume, I don't, haven't seen any previews, but I would assume you have another section down here in the bottom left. That would be like a modeling tab where you can start to build out your power pivot model with DAX calculations. Now in the meantime, you can certainly use the query section, which is, this is Power Query inside the Power BI Designer. You could use that query section to be able to create calculations there as well, because Power Query does have things like aggregates and sums and all sorts of things like that. Great. The, the next question is, would Power Query seek to replace SQL, SQL Management Studio for writing queries and pulling data and then pushing the data into a report in Excel? Yeah, good question. So it's really probably, uh, it depends on your role. Um, if, if, you're, if you live more on the database side, uh, your DBA, your, your uh, more enterprise BI 
person, you're probably still sticking with Management Studio for, for doing most of your querying of, of a SQL database. Uh, if, you're, if you find yourself as more of an Excel user, uh, you may. You may actually use Power Query as being that main way that you build out uh, queries because you can connect inside Power Query to SQL databases as I showed earlier. You can connect there and you can actually guide you through building out queries. It'll even do uh, joins for you automatically. Now does it do them in the best way? Sometimes not. Uh, but it does allow you inside Power Query to build out uh, queries against uh, SQL databases. Now, uh, again, it's probably not a full-on replacement for what you can do in Management Studio. You can't create store procedures and things like that, but it, uh, it is a good way if you're more of a self-service user to query a SQL database. Great. The, the next question is from Wendy. It's what is the data size limit? Sure. Uh, so data size limit really depends on your machine. Uh, so you can actually bring in quite a bit of data into Power Query. And I showed this briefly before, but let me just highlight it here one more time. Inside the Power Query window, our Power Query editor that I pulled up previously, the data that you're seeing here is just a preview of the full data set. So it's, it depends on how many columns and how much data you have to to how much data it actually shows here. But just note that the data that I'm looking at here on my screen right now is not the full data set, not the full query results. The full query results are actually taken care of whenever I hit this close and load button in the top right. Uh, now, your options here, you can, there's a close and load too, you'll see it's disabled, you'll, you'll, there's another way you can get to it as well. But the, if I hit close and load right now, it's gonna send this data into a spreadsheet. Now, a spreadsheet does have a limitation. There is a limitation, of course, is roughly a million rows you can handle in a spreadsheet. But the other option is I can close and load, and I can send this data into Power Pivot, where I do not have that same limitation of the amount of data. For example, here's what I can do. If I went over to my queries on the right-hand side, I could right-click and say, load this query to, and then it's going to present me an option of either loading it to a spreadsheet or to a data model, data model meaning Power Pivot. Uh, there, I don't have the same limitations that I have inside of Excel. So really, in that case, depends on the amount of RAM that I have. Uh, also, 64-bit machines are, are highly recommended when you're using any of the Power BI tools, mainly because 32-bit machines limit the amount of RAM that you can actually use. Even if you had, say, for example, if your machine had 8 gigs of RAM but you're running 32-bit, it's only going to consume 2 gigs. So you are limited with the amount of RAM that you can use on 32-bit. So, uh, a couple, a couple depends there. First of all, if you use Power Pivot, you have a little expanded amount of data you can store, and also the resources are a uh, main dependency there as well. Great. Uh, the next one is kind of a comment. Um, it's not just the number of rows. Excel gets fussy with large number of calculations as well. That was a comment about halfway through the session. He, oh, okay. he, might, he might have been referring to, you might have made a comment about something fuzzy in Excel. Um, yeah, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, we'll go, we'll go on. A uh, couple of great presentation, awesome presentation. This is good. Will this presentation be available for download? Yes, it is recorded, and it'll be uh, in the meeting archives, and it'll be a link to YouTube as a recording. And the last question is: other resources or books that we can use to learn more about Power Query? Yeah, great question. So there's really only one book out for Power Query right now that I'm aware of. Uh, it's written by Chris Webb, a really, really big guy in the uh, community. Um, and he has, let me pull it up real quickly so you guys can see it. He's the only Power Query specific book that I'm aware of. Uh, looks like there's one other new one here as well. Um, that one's fairly new that I wasn't aware of. But, oh, it says it came out in November. Um, I would recommend Chris's book just because I, 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 I kind of know, know him and I know he does a lot of good stuff. Um, he's written a book on Power Query and he also covers some of the mQuery language in here. Now, I will give you one word of warning and he, he would give you the same, same warning as well. It is because Power Query is updated so frequently that it's kind of difficult to get a book that's going to be exactly screenshot for screenshot what you're going to see on your screen because the add-ins are updated so frequently by the time that any book comes out, it may be very different. So just be aware of that. Uh, but I would recommend Chris's book. It has a lot of good stuff. Also, of course, we mentioned the, the webinars. Um, we have some free webinars. Even uh, I actually have another one that's going to be coming up later this month. If you're really interested in the inquiry language, I've been spending a lot of time in it lately. Uh, I'm going to dive through some actually basic to intermediate uh, inquiry stuff, which is what's driving Power Query behind the scenes. 
Uh, and then um, uh, Thomas just put, oh yeah, you, you can go ahead. I was say, you just put in the uh, chat window there the link to download the recording, right? Yes, I just, uh, I just sent it out to everybody. It's on the Excel BIVC uh, um, web page on the uh, SQL Pass org site. Um, it's good to see uh, Patrick LeBlanc's face on there too. Yeah, he moved away from you, but he, he, I guess he's still, uh, he's still hanging around, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll close the session. Again, the recording.